Welcome to a new video of GLSL.io. In this vid video, we will explain you how to create GLSL transitions and we will explain you what is the basics of WebGL fragment shader. So let's go in the editor. Right now it's, uh, it's a template of a new transition. It's a block plate. You just do a fade in, fade out uh, between the two images. So what we have first, we will explain what is this main function. And first of all, you must thinking, think it as a position to color function. It seems to be weird, it's a C language. Here it doesn't really clear that it returns a color, but basically this main function is just a, po a point to a color. And a point here is a vector2. Let's talk about the right language of GLSL. So vec2 is just two components and two float components. So this main function, this is its signature. It's, it is the signature of main here. And how to do that is just that the GLSL frag color is a return value here. Yeah. And the input is GL frag chord. Just uh, you have to know that. That's just the basics. So now let's focus on the last uh, line here. So it's where we we set the final color of the fragment. And how do we set it? We use a mix function, and inside you have two texture two D. So let's explain that. Okay, so the mix function will mix between, will blend two colors. In this case, it's two colors. This return a colors. This return a colors. So the two first agreement are colors, and progress is the value which move from one, zero to one here. So we mix two colors with progress, and what are those two colors? Is just the from image and the to image. But how do we get the right pixel? We have to use texture to do 2D, which do which is doing a lookup into the texture with the coordinate. So P here is a coordinate, from is a texture. It's a sampler 2D uh, type. And this returns a vec4 which is R, G, B, A. Same here. You can do that. You can check it. It compiles, so it's C here. And now what is this P here? It's a computed value from the points here. But you have to know that this point is in pixels. So what we are doing here is just we divide the x, y in pixels into the resolution of the canvas. So here we have a p which is in 0, 1 range, right? Of course I'm talking about the x and the y values which are in this range. We are doing that because Texture2D is actually using this normalized uh, value. It, uh, it will look up uh, in the image with this normalized percentage. So just to prove what I am saying, if I say minus p here, um, yeah, it doesn't do what I accept. Okay, one, so we are still in the same range. One minus p, it actually reverses the from image. And here you have nice uh, feedback that saying that the from is not correct. And I don't know if you have saw this, but you can have uh, contextual uh, documentation on each functions, which is quite cool, even on literals, on special variables. And you have links to uh, a cheat sheet and the GLSL specification where you have all defined functions. So now let's just roll back on preview stuff on the original code. And one thing I forgot to explain yet 
is what are uniforms. So in this uh, function, as you can see, we iterate over each pixels. This function just focus on one point of the of the final canvas. So this function will be called for each pixels here, and of course it's doing it in the uh, in the GPU. But now what what we have here is actually not in this main function. It's you can you can see it as a constants like immutable variables, and by uniform it means it came from the external world. So actually in JavaScript. And here, yeah, if you have other uniforms, like uh, I have another float here, you will see it appears here because it's just my, by convention, uh, transitions need to have those variable because it's required for making a transition. But you can also define cust your custom uh, uniforms and those come from the external. So if I just add my F to the color, this will actually be cast as a vec4 because it has to be the same type. And what's going to happen here if I increment this is I will have a lighter display because it will increase uh, each component uh, of the color. And colors in uh, the GLSL world are values also from 0 to 1. You have to remember that in GLSL everything is uh, used to be normalized between 0 and 1. It's really convenient to use uh, variables like this. So for instance, a color like this is red. And this is for alpha. OK, so now you know the basics of uh, GLSL transition. Let's take a look at an example uh, first. As a very simple example, let's try to use a texture as a parameter um, because because I've just showed you that you can use custom parameters here, but it's not only for uh, vector2, it can also be for textures. So let's see that happen. Oh, cool. So here we have a new kind of parameters, which is textures. And I can choose one of the predefined textures. Let's take a look at this one, for instance, the conic symmetric. And we try to use it just simple simply by using this texture 2d to look up to the texture again and let's just adding up to the original uh, fading fade out so if we just take the same position here you can see the effect it's actually just adding to the color uh, this texture But now we are going to use it in a smarter way. What we want to do is to say that the black here means it's the beginning of the transition and the white here is the end of the transition. And the usage of uh, such a texture is called a luma. This is why we have uh, the name luma here. Because basically all textures here are for this kind of usage. And how can we do that? We can just use this texture to the here but not taking it as a color, but as a, a float value. It's just a float value, right? Actually, it's a vector 4. So the result of the lookup is a vector 4. But we can just take the red component, for instance, it's just black and white. So why not doing this? We take the first component. Oh, sorry. And what can we do with error is we can use the step function. And if you don't remember what the step function is, you can take a look at, at help. Return 0 if x lower than edge, otherwise it returns 1. So it will be quite useful. So what is edge in my case? Let's use error for instance. Um, and let's compare it actually to the progress. Can we do that? Yeah, it just seems to complain, of course, because it's not a value, it's not a float here. So let's call this Pierre. I don't have any proper name. 
So what can we do with that? Uh, we could do something like this. Oh, it's not expected, but it's cool. <laughs> I think that's something you can always say when you play with GLSL. It's not expected, but it's cool. <laughs> so what we are doing here is just a if to switch either between the from or between the two. So Pierre will say if it's from or, or if it's two. Pierre, if it's zero, it will be from, and if it's two, it'll be, it will be. Uh, if it's one, it will be two. That's cool, but not now what we would want to add is to have more smoothness in the effect. And I'm not going to go further uh, to show you that. I can just show you some how some guy who already made it. But it's working, you see? You have some s softness in the effect. It's very cool. And what is very cool with this kind of uh, transitions is you can just change the texture and you have uh, an infinite number of uh, possible transitions with that. I also recommend to look at other examples because you have many different effects you can do. Of course you can not only play with the position where you look up the texture but uh, also you can uh, use colors. You can play with colors and you can do much much more cool stuff which is not even made yet. I hope people will make crazy stuff. Thanks guys! See you soon.